Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next lesson, which is titled Simple Urban System. In this lesson, I introduce you to a basic static model and the model of a basic urban system. It's called basic because it uh, includes a few aspects of an urban system only and it's static because we work with it um, without the aspect of time. We only consider the interde um, interdependencies of various um, aspects, which we could call stocks again. Um, in our case, we use sizes, which we need for certain land uses and how they um, are linked with each other. To have a look at it, um, please open the uh, definition 03 simple urban system that I provided to you. And we need the plugin, which is um, written in at the top of the definition, the human uh, mm. version 1.7. And this is needed for the visualization, which you can see here, to visualize these squares, which indicates the sizes of our land use that we need. Okay, so I assume you have installed it and you see all the components that are shown in the video. The definition is structured in a way that you see on the left hand side the control parameters for our static model. As I mentioned, it's static because here we don't have the aspect of time modeled by our loop components, by the anemone loop that's not used here because there is no time, no iterations, no time steps in the model. So it's a pure static model means if we change a parameter, we have a direct um, outcome um, of, of one of our functions. Okay, in the middle we see the urban system model, which we will look into in a minute. And on the right hand side, we have the visualization group, which basically um, creates these rectangles and the different colors represent the sizes of our land uses. So here they are strictly separated because we are only interested in the sizes and the relationships of the sizes to each others. So blue is the city size, means the size of the city for the population, for the people who live in the city. The green is the area that we need for agriculture to feed the population, to produce the food. And yellow is the area that we need for energy production. For example, if we assume we need it um, for uh, uh, renewable energy, biogas or solar panels or wind power plants that need some space. And the orange one finally is the industry or the service area that are needed and that is needed for creating workplaces for our people. Okay, now let's look into these four components. These are the four aspects of the four land uses. So first of all, the city, um, you see we have the area, the density as an input. Density is controlled by this variable. The area comes from this blue area and the blue box, which we can control with this slider. So if we decrease it, everything is decreased or increased. So that's a linear relationship between these land uses depending on the initial set of the city size. Um, for our city, we have a food demand per person, an energy demand per person, and a workplace demand per person, because we assume uh, we have a kind of a um, static or equilibrium model where we have always the ideal condition implemented. So every person has so and so many workplaces. And this um, model, for example, we define 0 0.7 workplace per person means any person or more person can be in a household. Therefore, not everyone need to be need to have a job. So we could also decrease this. But the interesting aspect is if we open now the city component, which is a C sharp script, 
Um, now we come back to your programming skills that were trained in the first part of the module. Now um, the moment comes where I hope you understand why we need all this um, programming training. Here you can see very, very simple usage of variables and mathematical formulas. Similar as in our expression editor, we just um, include here basic functions, basic expressions. In this case, my population size depends on the density multiplied by the area. So that's the number of people that I can fit into my city. Then the food demand depends on the population size that was computed in the first line of code and multiplied by the food demand per person, which is again very simple. Energy demand is a function of the population, the size of the population multiplied by an inverse of the density means the higher the density, the less energy my city will consume because I don't need to travel around so much. Um, I have more compact buildings and so on and so on. And I have the energy demand per person factor. Then I have the work demand, um, which is computed by population size multiplied by the workplaces. So that's it. This is the first part of my city model. Um, and if I manipulate the sliders, for example, food demand per person, if I increase it a little bit, you see the green area increases in size because I need more um, land use for agriculture to feed the people in my city. If I decrease it again, it shrinks. The same for energy. If I need more energy for the people because they have a less efficient heating system or travel more by cars, or if they use more public transport, maybe they can save energy or increase the isolation of the houses and so on. So this um, tells us how much land use, how much space is needed for energy production. So that's a very, very simple and basic model. Then we have the component for agriculture. If you open it, you will find only one line of code. This is the needed area for agriculture, which is the food demand multiplied by an efficiency coefficient. So you see that's only one line. We could also use the expression editor as we have done it in before. And here I have an efficiency variable. Um, if I increase the efficiency, if we have some new technology for agriculture that allows us to produce more plants, on a certain area of land means more food, then I need less area, of course. Also machines and all kinds of technology can help us. The same for energy um, area per unit, that's also kind of an efficiency um, value, um, how much area I need to produce one unit of energy. So it's again the same simple line of code, this formula. Industry and service, it's a little bit more complicated. So for industry, I define that I need energy per workplace. So there is a workplace demand for energy per workplace unit. And we again define the area that's needed for the industry or the service means the workplaces itself. And you have these control parameters and you can play around with it and changing the energy that's needed for the workplaces or the sizes that you need for a workplace. If you have many people in big factories, you maybe have less space. If you have um, other kind of works, nice and beautiful offices, you may need more space. So that's basically the idea of this static urban model. So it's not very complicated. It's not complex. It's these are linear relationships. Um, but please try to understand how it works, how the outputs are linked to the inputs of the next component and how they work together. Um, be sure that you understand why a rectangle shrinks or grows. And this is the basis for the next model, which um, is then the dynamic urban simulation model, where we add then the aspect of time. So we put all these um, components
components, our urban system model into a dynamic system model means we connect certain stocks to our loop component. But therefore, it's really important that you understand, first of all, of course, the C-sharp code, but this is very trivial so far, and how the mechanism, how the elements work together um, are designed and how they work. So please spend a while exploring the model, playing around with it.